Okay, so this is uh, just a uh, network topology diagram that I took out of our da data sheet. And I'm, I'm hoping that when you look at this now, it actually makes a little more sense than just uh, a quick glance at it earlier. What this is, is basically a collection of ant channels. So over here we got, um, on the left, top left side over there, we got three unidirectional ant channels, all broadcasting to slave devices. Here we just have a bidirectional ant channel for a peer-to-peer. -peer. AntFS is actually a collection of ant channels because it uses broadcast, acknowledged, and first types of messages. This is a star topology, which is just a collection of bidirectional AND channels talking to different nodes. <coughs> this over here is a scanning channel, so it allows many to one connections. Over here, what we call practical mesh, is just a collection of star networks, which are connected by simple AND channels. And over here in the shared cluster area, it's basically the same kind of thing, except we've introduced the concept of shared channels on some of these nodes, also all connected using individual AND channels. And over here, I just have the unidirectional shared channels, where, there, where you just broadcast messages to all the slaves. And then I have bidirectional AND channels, where you can actually address each slave individually and send a different message to each node on a, on a channel period. And then this last one over here is the ad hoc auto shared channel where you actually have a handshaking procedure to assign an address to the slave. Um, I'm going to finish off with just some quick definitions because I know you're going to be hearing more of this in future presentations over the next couple of days. This one actually might be covered in this presentation, so I'm just going to quickly go through this. There are three types of network keys. Uh, network key, of course, is one of the parameters that your master defines and owns and that your slave needs to know. Uh, public key is all zeros. It's open to everyone. It's generally used for development purposes. It's not very secure. So if you, if you design a product with, a, with an open network key or a public network key, anybody can design a, another device that will be able to sniff and connect to your, your device. Private keys are also available, and this is where we actually give you and we issue a key to you and nobody else, and you, you get to manage that key and use it however you like. So you basically get to share it with whoever you like to share it with. Uh, this is the most secure solution because you can control who is actually going to listen to your devices, and you can choose to be a closed system where you only design devices that will be able to be part of that network. And then, of course, there are the managed keys, which are the ANT plus, uh, AN plus key, where you have a unique key that's identical for all ANT plus members. The ANT plus key is managed by Dynastream and unique by identical. Some other definitions, ANTFS, some of you have, may, have, may have heard of this, um, and you're going to see a whole presentation on this, and it's going to get mentioned in a lot of presentations over the next couple of days. ANTFS is basically a file transfer utility that allows you to send files over ant. And it's really the basis of a lot of new protocols that are coming up, uh, especially in the medical market, where you're storing data on a device and then you're transferring it in a file fashion, in a bulk fashion, over the air. Uh, the unique things about AntFS is that it's, it's authenticated, so there's a level of security to it. It's automated. Well, we've tried to make it, make it as seamless as possible to the user, so the user of your devices and it still operates off of a coin cell battery. So while you can do file transfers over a lot of other different types of technologies, only AND really allows you to get this functionality and still be able to run off of a coin cell battery. FIT is another word that you're going to hear, and FIT is a file format. It's, uh, it was designed to be extensible and scalable. It's basically a way of storing data in, uh, in a specific binary format that's both forwards and backwards compatible and provides an end-to-end -end solution for data transport. I like to refer to it as a, a binary version of XML for those of you who are familiar with XML technology. I'm going to do a demo for you of Antware. Unfortunately, I'm not using my PC, so I don't actually have Antware on this PC. Um, but this is a very useful tool if you ever get a chance to play around with the dev kit 
Uh, this, this was released last year. It's uh, based on c The source code is fully available. And it basically allows you to play around with all the different features that I uh, mentioned in this presentation and a whole bunch of other ones as well. And it really is a good way of illustrating some of the different concepts of ant channels using actual hardware and software where you can actually see data going back and forth. Development kits, so if you don't have one of these and are looking to design with Ant, your first step is probably to get an Ant development kit. And the development <coughs> kit is actually very slick. It's, uh, it provides a very nice user experience for developers. It comes with a collection of our modules, which um, you can use for development, but this is also a sample of modules that can be used for production as well. So if you don't want to have to design your own antenna and go through FCC and all that, you can actually use one of our modules as well. Um, so the current dev kit has two AT3 modules. It has two AP2 modules. It has a battery board, which allows you to, um, A, it's got a little battery harness on it, which allows you to stick in a little 2032 point cell battery. And it also has a breakout board, which allows you to interface your external microprocessor to. There's also a little I.O. board, so it's just a little board with some, um, some lights and some buttons that you can use to develop. And all these components stack on top of each other. It's almost like playing with Lego bricks. Uh, it comes with two USB sticks, so you can actually uh, get, you can ab enable your PC as an ant node and develop PC applications. That's useful if you're doing actual production level PC applications. It's also useful to use um, for development. So you can simulate your sensor and your network types and your communication on the PC before you actually port them to the embedded application. It comes with two, two batteries. Um, there's a CD-ROM, which actually is not in there anymore, and a couple of quick start cards. So once you do purchase a dev kit, then you get access to our dev zone, which um, gives you a lot more resources to get moving forward with your, um, with your embedded development. So we provide you with sample source code, and the sample source code will A, show you how to interface to the ant chips. So it'll show you what the drivers are, how to implement the drivers for the different options in serial. And on top of that, we actually provide you with some application level um, source code as well. So you can implement things such as frequency agility. Um, we have a sample application that implements the auto shared channels. We have another one that actually implements a relay where you can relay data on a node to another device. And in general, they also show you how to set up the channels, how to set up your state machines to receive the proper events and messages from Ant. We also have embedded code available for every Ant Plus profile. So this will show you how to implement and encode and decode all the different values that are defined by an Ant Plus profile. We also have a very rich collection of PC source code, including a full library that you can uh, just drop into your application with a very well-defined and very simple API to use. And that's available both for the PC and for Mac environments. And I think this year we also introduced .NET. So we actually have a .NET library where you can drop your, uh, the Ant library directly into a .NET application and use it that way. And then of course we have sample applications that show you how to use the, the library as well. And then if you get stuck, we do have uh, support available to you. Um, best best source of support before you, before you, um, if you do get stuck is actually the documentation. There's a lot of documentation that we make available on our website. Um, the Ant protocol and usage document is probably the first document you'd want to look at as you get developing with Ant. We also have an Ant interfacing document which explains how to interface to the serial port of the Ant chip. We have a whole lot of application notes which get into a little more detail on some of the specific items within Ant. We have technical notes, and then of course we have the data sheets, which explain the features of the chips that you're designing to. Uh, we also have the website where all the documentation is based. The website also has a forum, so if you post your question, it will either get answered by somebody else within the Ant Plus ecosystem or by one of ourselves. And then of course, if you get really stuck, we do offer uh, direct support, and support is offered by the applications engineering team and the sales team depending on the na nature of your question. Uh, we offer both email and phone support, and of course it is limited. Uh, we're a fairly small team, so 
sometimes there is a bit of lag before we can actually get around to answering your questions. That's it. Uh, any questions?